be talking about the introduction to trigger release. And trigger release pretty much means um, able to, uh, an attachment that allows you to complete missions uh, with very few motors, if not any. So, as you know, if you have uh, you're using the NXT or EV3, and you have a limited amount of motors that you can use. So whether that be three or four. So you will really want to um, manage the amount of motors you're using and use them efficiently. So there's going to be some, obviously, probably two, that are used for driving. And you only have one or two extra motors to do missions. So that's not a lot. And if you want to do extra missions, you, you're going to probably use something called trigger release, where you use one motor to do multiple missions, or you just use the driving motors to do a mission. So the trigger part of the name comes from um, an initial trigger, whether that be a motor triggering it or the two driving motors bumping into a wall triggering it or something like that. And the release is using the power of mainly two things, rubber bands and gravity. So you can use these Lego, Lego rubber bands uh, in, your, in the competition. So in the last video, we talked about one-way doors. And one-way doors falls under the category of trigger release. So there's two types of trigger release mainly. There's, there's passive trigger release and there's active trigger release. So passive trigger release is where we only use the driving motors as a trigger, meaning um, we don't need any other extra motor to complete a mission. So let's say we wanted to uh, pick up this, this loop that's sideways and bring it back to base. So what we can do is we can we could use an arm like a hook that's connected to a motor and pick it out, but that will require a motor. Instead, we could use this one-way door, which can, things can go in but can't go out, as a trigger release mechanism. So the trigger comes from the robot moving into the ring, and the release is the piece holding here and allowing the robot to pull out the ring. Another example of trigger release is where we bump against a wall or a mission model. So in this case, we're using this yellow gear as a representation of where the robot is going to contact the wall or mission model. So the robot, um, the trigger in this case would be the two giant motors, and then the robot would just bump against the wall and pushing the yellow, yellow gear. And there we go, we just, uh, this arm swung back and caught the ring, and now the robot can move around and bring the loop around. So one last example of trigger release, a uh, passive trigger release, is something like this attachment. So again, the yellow gear is where we're gonna contact the wall or mission model. So in this case, we're gonna have the, uh, we're going to have the attachment, uh, this black hook here, uh, catching the ring. So something that looks like this. And there we go. We can bring the loop around, and it's caught inside here. So just a side view of it, something that looks like this. And there we go. We caught the ring inside here. So now we're going to talk about active trigger release. An active trigger release is uh, a trigger release, again it's powered by some rubber band or gravity, and in this case we're using an extra motor to trigger it. For example, we have this motor um, with this little gray hook here that's keeping it in place, and with just a little turn, it triggers it and it pops out. So now you might be asking, well, why do I need a trigger release to do a motion if I need a motor? Why can't I just use a motor and complete the mission? And the answer is, you can hook up multiple trigger releases to that one power source or motor. For example, here we have two trigger releases that's being held together by one motor. Oh, sorry. Again, the robot's actually um, a lot better at holding these things together, and you don't need to worry about things slipping. So all you need to do is just have a little turn, and two trigger releases are being released at once. So here's another example of this duo trigger release mechanism. So here up top we have an uh, arm that's powered by a rubber band that's one trigger release. 
And then the second trigger release is this white um, hook that could be grabbing some sort of ring, sideways ring, and that's powered by gravity. So now we could just chain both of these together, both of these trigger releases together, and with a simple turn of this yellow gear, both of them are triggered. So technically it's saving you an extra motor. You won't be using two motors to complete two tasks. You're using one motor and you can do multiple tasks um, to combine together. So this is an example of trigger release being used in action. Um, actually, this is an example of active trigger release, which is the more dominant form. So here is the attachment from uh, the world class. The, it was uh, our attachment from last year. And basically, this was our first round attachment. So this arm out here um, is connected to the motor, and that is used to insert the cloud access key into the cloud access mission. Um, it, that was a mission last year in the world class mat. And if you, I don't know if you guys remember, but there is a ring that is blocking, that is in the way, and you can get points if you deliver to some place, so we wanted to get back to base. So all we did um, to keep to collect it with us is we had this side arm right here to sweep it in and catch it. Uh, uh, but that wasn't part that wasn't connected to a motor. In fact, if you can see there is a white rubber band being held in place right here and that is what's powering it. So in fact this huge uh, sidearm contraption is a trigger release and it's being held in place by this pin right here. So this pin right here is holding the big um, sidearm from releasing. So this is an example of active trigger release because this arm is technically the motor giving a trigger releasing the pin and the sidearm which is powered by a rubber band will snap the ring back. So this is what it looks like in action. It's pretty fast. So as you can see, the arm lifted up and then the side arm swung back because the pin was released.